In the year 1834, Emile Clapeyron wove together the threads of Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, Gay-Lussac's Law, and Avogadro's Law into a single entity, the Ideal Gas Law. The newly formed law was a revelation, taking into account many properties, was easy to use, and was a great predictor for gas behavior in many scenarios. However, the ideal gas law was not perfect, as many would come to discover over the coming years. The problems they uncovered happened at extreme pressures and temperatures, in which this law would break down and fail to predict behaviors of these gases. This law was still failing to take into account some lurking variables, and these variables would be unveiled for the first time in 1873 by a Dutch physicist by the name of Johan van der Waals. Van der Waals by no means had a normal education. 1873 was the year in which he proposed his thesis and obtained his doctorate from the University of Leiden, but it was long overdue, for he was 36 years old at the time. As odd as it may seem, it wasn't for his lack of passion for knowledge. In pursuit of further education, he attended lectures at Leiden University, but never was able to enroll in the courses. This was due to the fact that in order to enroll as a full-time student at the university, it was required to have a fluency in Latin, a skill which van der Waals unfortunately lacked. So he continued to teach himself and work as a physics teacher until education reforms in the Netherlands eliminated the Latin requirement. When the time finally came, he took and easily passed the math and physics qualification exams and became enrolled in the university. Van der Waals's thesis was entitled On the Continuity of the Gas and Liquid State. In this thesis, he modified the ideal gas law into a new equation, which would later come to be known as the van der Waals equation. This equation was almost identical to the ideal gas law, except it added two key factors. The first factor was based on the assumption that gases are made of actual molecules and take up space in the volume that they exist in, which was an assumption that the ideal gas law did not make. Van der Waals proposed that the volume of the container would be less than expected by the ideal gas law and would be based on the number of gas molecules present and also on the volume that each molecule occupied on average. The second factor was based on the assumption that these molecules also interact with one another through electrostatic intermolecular forces. This is hardly noticeable on large scales, but when put under extreme scenarios, intermolecular forces affect the gas's behavior at a noticeable level. He proposed that the pressure would be less than expected by the ideal gas law due to the attractive nature of these electrostatic forces. Since all molecules are attracted to each other in this way, the intermolecular force will increase exponentially as the concentration of molecules increases. This is represented mathematically as the concentration of molecules squared multiplied by the intermolecular force the molecules have for that specific gas. Although a revolutionary proposal, the van der Waals equation was not widely accepted at first. It went largely unnoticed for four years due to his publication being in Dutch, and most didn't even know about it until 1877 when it was published in a popular German journal. Even then, however, there was still some fight back against this proposal. Many at the time did not believe that molecules even existed, or at least wouldn't accept their existence because it couldn't be proven. However, van der Waals' thesis had one huge aspect going for it. It got the immediate backing of notable physicist James Clerk Maxwell, who heralded van der Waals as to soon be on the foremost of molecular science. Over the next few decades, the scientific community came to accept Johann's proposal as true, and he eventually received tons of praise for it. Van der Waals received the Nobel Prize in Physics for his work on the equation of state for gases and liquids. This was not the only work he was known for, either. After receiving his doctorate, van der Waals became a professor at a new school, the University of Amsterdam, alongside other notable scientists and close friends, Hugo de Vries and Henry van Hoff. Together, they brought Dutch science to a new high point and helped raise their university to high stature. 
Van der Waals later further cemented his status with the Law of Corresponding States in 1880, which led to the eventual liquidation of both hydrogen and helium, and later on, the discovery of superconductivity. Other notable accomplishments of his include a theory of binary mixtures in 1890 and an early theory of capillary action in 1893. By the time of his death in 1923, Van der Waals had revolutionized the understanding of fluid behavior and opened the door for many new discoveries based on the many interesting properties of states of matter. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more videos on scientific progress made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.